Roma and I own uh, Roma's Butchery in South Royalton, right up on 14. Uh, I just opened that up during the pandemic because I'm crazy. So um, uh, before that, my husband and I uh, own and run Putting Down Roots Farm, which is the hillside behind us, um, where we raise uh, during the peak of the summer, usually 1,500 birds for eggs and another like 300 for meat birds. And then in the past, I would raise between 20 to 40 pigs on pasture. Um, currently not doing that because now I'm running a butcher shop too. <laughs> so um, let's see here. So that's our farm. Um, and we later bought this. We, my husband and I were living in a yurt for a couple of years. And uh, when this house opened up, the owners were looking to sell. We decided to move into a building, so here we are. <laughs> um, so, I, oh yes, these are all Freedom Rangers. So, a typical thing for us to do is we buy Cornish Cross for that first batch, but then everything after that is all Freedom Rangers. And the reason we do that is because spring uh, and summer is so quirky here, and when markets start it makes it easier because Freedom Rangers take eight to 10 weeks. And by the time you get the chicks and it's warm enough to put them outside and on pasture, it's not, it, it, the timing doesn't work. So what we do is Cornish crosses because they take four to six weeks. So we do Cornish cross at the very beginning of the season because it's a lot quicker to get them up to size while we have that really funky weather. We have chicks and they're in the brooder and in the house and the grass still isn't ready and you um, know. A big reason that I wanted to do this workshop is because like Caroline is saying, I can, at my butcher shop, I can sell Misty Knoll birds. It's a Vermont um, poultry uh, farm, but it's mostly indoors from what I understand. Um, and what I've seen and I am wanting to support the local farmers small farmers that are doing pasture raised and there's no way that we can do that um, with the way regulations are with the state because I can't even bring pasture raised slaughtered birds on farm to my shop part them out and sell them it's not allowed so um, I can't even bring in whole birds that are from farmers on slaughtered and sold to my shop. I can't sell them in my shop. Um, so what I decided was that instead of, um, like I am still supporting Misty Knoll. They're, they are a Vermont based poultry farm. And so I still sell Misty Knoll birds that I do part out for the shop. But I'm doing these workshops so that our community can go out, support local farmers, buy five birds from a farmer, buy 10 birds from a farmer when they're ready. Instead of just one at the market on that day, you buy 10 from that farmer, support that farmer, bring them home, thaw them, break them down to what you want and put them into your freezer the way you want. So that's kind of my goal is to get our community to start thinking about how to support our farmers. I've touched on in most things, so. All right, so let's get to killing some things. So um, where are we gonna start? It's easier to hold on to a chicken by its feet than by the wings that flap and it gets all messy. So it's just easier. It's also when trying to grab them, you can like get low and grab at a leg is easier than trying to like jump at the bird. Um, so, and for everyone that's here, I am left-handed. So you'll see a lot of my methods are done left-handed. So um, just kind of switch it around for your right-handedness. Um, this bird, this is my kill cone. So I've had this cone for a long time. <laughs> uh, at the farm, we also have a whole board of about five cones, but I kind of use this one for small slaughters. Um, and it's easy. I also set up this way because this is where I'm working and this is where the guts are going. So it's, I'm not doing too much movement. Um, and this way the blood is here. I've learned throughout the years 
you can kill, you can have your cones over here and this over there, but then the cleanup. And the cleanup is so frustrating. So you just, once you're done slaughtering, you just want to be done. So I've made it to where my bucket, this, this is taking it to the compost, the tractor. So I'm setting up a kill cone where the blood's going into it. It's where the guts are going and the feet are going if we're not saving them. And then that way I just have to get on this tractor and drive it away. So you also see over here in the um, plucker over here, I have this grate. This grate will catch feathers and I'll just throw them into the bucket. And that way it's an easier cleanup than the feathers all over your driveway, or the feathers all over your yard or whatnot. It's just small little methods I've found have helped make this go by a little bit quicker. So we're gonna take a nice pointy knife um, to kill. So things to think about um, when when killing um, is that what if you want to take your neck, if you push on the back of your neck where your spine is, yeah. and if you roll your fingers forward, you're pulling all of your veins and arteries to the front mostly. So that's what I'm doing with my birds. I'm taking my fingers. I'm starting at the back of the neck and I'm pushing my fingers and pushing everything forward. And then from there, I'm what everything is, what all is forward. I'm then going in with the knife, going in to the middle of the neck, right at that spine and just barely like if this is the vertebrae, I'm going in right at it and then cutting out. Feathers are hard to cut. They're not an easy thing to cut. They cause problems. They dull your knife. So trying to cut this way with the knife, you're not getting it and you're going to miss it or you're just, you're going to make the chicken very uncomfortable with a couple nicks to where if you're going in, cutting out, you're getting out the arteries. And then I go also, once I've cut open the, the neck, I kind of roll the skin back and look and see if both uh, veins are, are shooting and if they're both shooting blood or there's blood coming out. I'm like, okay, I've got, the bird is gonna bleed out well. If I don't, then I kind of graze with the knife uh, either side of the neck to make sure that the blood is pumping out. Because you want the blood out. If blood stays in, it's gonna cause rot later on in your process. So the more blood, that's like why we're not stopping the heart. We want the heart to pump that blood out. So that, um, so we can, so this way and then you're going in in the middle and then yep. coming back no no it's forward okay 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 yeah so, so you're, you're you're making sure that you're past all of this mm -hmm. into the fleshy part yep then, okay so i'm 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 pretty much i'm pushing my fingers forward and then just kind of holding on to the neck that we have something sturdy to hold on to yeah. and then with my knife hand i'm going in like right in front of that oh. and pushing in going across and then coming out so that's my method of doing it other people have different methods my husband doesn't even like doing that method because you're also cutting the um the throat which then uh they can suck blood up into which then also is a problem so my husband likes to try to like nick both that's his method everyone has a different method some people use loppers which is really easy if you can put a chicken in hold the head down and someone lop it. And that's a quick method as well. Then you don't even have to think about the head, um, uh, except for when you have a chicken that's kind of still alive and jumps out with the no head and spins around. That's entertaining. What I do, um, my method is I put the chicken in, since I'm left-handed, I put the chicken in so that it's facing to the right if that makes sense. So you'll see here, I'm putting the chicken in. So the head is facing that way. Is that right? Yes. Nope. I'm doing it wrong. I'm backwards. I'm usually on this side, so it's very backwards for me. So here we go. So with my right hand, I'm grabbing hold of the neck and right, right here at the jawline. Okay, so it's not up here. You're not tr trying to grab the neck up here or wherever. It's you're going right at this jawline right here. Okay, 
And so I take my fingers and I just kind of roll them forward and I feel all of this right here. And so then from there, what I'm doing is I'm just taking it, going knife in in the middle, going through and then coming out. And see, I'm checking both sides and I see it flowing through. I also like to just hold it for a minute. I don't want to deal with the mess later. I don't want to deal with blood all over me. I don't want to deal with that. So I just kind of hold it and let it help drain out and keep it all in my bucket. If you're doing production, this is probably not something you want to do. I'm wearing a skirt today, so I don't want to get this. <laughs> so if you see me in Grundy's or overalls, it, it's a big production day. <laughs> so... biggest reason for not taking the whole head is just knife longevity basically so you're yes. not cutting feathers. Yeah, not cutting feathers, not cutting bone. Mm -hmm. And that way I can just keep using this knife to hold like all 30 hundred birds. That one is on scalder and you're killing the next one. Then you have someone else. It's, it's, it's really helpful to have two people, a tag team at least. So you have someone doing the dirty bits and someone in the clean bits. That's always really helpful because then the person that's dealing with the blood and the poop is over here. And the person that's dealing with like the clean carcass or mostly clean carcass is over here. So on the table. So now, uh, right now the temperature in the um, scalder is 140, which is actually pretty low. Um, recommended temperature is between 130 and 170. So uh, things that have, I have a kill knife and then I have my, I have a fatter knife that I use to actually uh, do all the other bits here on the table. Um, it's kind of fun to also be something in something dry. It gets pretty wet over here. So there's always, you can use a, a apron like this. It's the plastic, plastic aprons. They last one time. This thing has been through so many things. So. Amazon is a great thing to find an apron that has a little bit more durability to it. Um, so this piece here, chicken plucker from Amazon as well. I used to rent the same exact one, just not as pretty from True Value. Um, you can rent chicken plucker from True Value. Um, not too expensive, though once we started doing this quite often, decided to buy one of our own. So. This is, I've seen, I've worked in so many different places with different chicken pluckers. As a home processor, this thing is awesome. It's so easy to clean. It is, take it all apart. They can spray this down, take the feathers off, spray this down, take the feathers off. And most pluckers, you can't take this apart. It is one plastic one. box. All right. I like this <laughs> to be on the safe side, kind of lock it down because sometimes chickens get rowdy in here. So, um, uh, at with the plucker from True Value, was, I guess it was a older model, and they didn't think through safety measures. So we were able to connect to the electrical uh, foot pedal. So every time that we were plucking, my husband would turn on the foot pedal stand on there, pluck the birds, and then be able to get off the foot pedal and then go on. But um, this has a safety mechanism, ne mechanism that we haven't uh, fixed yet. <laughs> uh, so it's you have to go under, turn it on, go back, turn it off. And it's a little bit more, more of a pain, but um, we got to get that altered. <laughs> so, all right, so... <sighs> Bird wise. So right now we're, it says we're at 168. So we'll see how that goes. So bird is dead. It's not kicking. It's not flinching. That way I don't get water all over myself. I use two hands. That way when I put the bird in, I kind of twist the legs and that way I can move it around like this. Because if you're just dunking, you're not getting in between there and you're not going to get all the feathers off. So then I'm checking. It's not ready yet. That was too much of a pull to try to get them off. So some places like Kiss the Cow, they have the scalder. You put the bird in. See, that was a nice pull. There was no give to it. 
So Kiss Cow has a scalder. You put the bird in, it lifts it, and it just keeps flipping it in the hot, scalding water. And um, then it just comes out, and it's beautiful. So for this plucker, to help keep the feathers at bay, I use the water as well. That's, and there's the magic. So this could have probably sat in the scholar for maybe like another second or two, and these feathers on the wings would have been gone. So um, when you have a team, one person skulls, and that way they can keep track. So I keep track. I say, okay, that was in for 10 seconds. Next time it's in for 12 seconds. Next time it's in for 13 or 14 seconds. Or, okay, we turn the, the water on. So the, you want to stay one consistent scalder. Because if you don't, then this person does it for 10, and that person counts differently, and their 10 is actually a 15, and then you have skin coming off. So kind of it's better to have one person be that job. So that's something else to kind of take into account. So it's, it's a good practice to have your table be the clean place. So here... Um, rinse it off before it comes here. Things that I first do, take off the dirty bits. The dirty bits include the feet. Um, they come right off. That's one of the first things. There's a lot of poo that can be on the feet. So I take if them right off. If you want to keep the feet, what do you need to do to them? Um, keep them somewhere else. Um, and then this is most people that use feet to process. You're cooking them down again, scalding them to then peel them and all that. Um, if you have one of those scalders, the whole chicken goes into the scalder, including the feet. That's when those feet, that's, are, that's peeling right there for you. So it just kind of varies. Uh, so now the dirty feet are off. I'll spin it around and then I will have the dirty head as another place and I'll just take that right off and so now my more dirty bits are out of the way um, so here I'm just cleaning off any other excess feathers so something I learned when I was at the slaughterhouses hair uh, feathers all that is considered dirty um, skin is clean hair is dirty uh, because hair, animal hair, uh, human hair, it all has debris, dirt, things on it. So you want to get that off. And so when I'm at my slaughterhouse, if we see hair on a carcass, we're not just picking it off. We're not rinsing it off. We're cutting that hair, wherever that hair is, we're cutting that skin off because hair if you're rinsing it, that rinsing just spreads whatever's on that hair onto the carcass. If you're just plucking, it's still there. You just can't see it. So by cutting it off, you're just getting rid of whatever is on there. And that is really important for us to have safe food that we can continue to keep doing these on-farm slaughters and keep eating. So that's, that's one thing one of the state inspectors taught me at the slaughterhouses is about cutting it off. So, so here I've gotten my carcass kind of as clean as I want it. I'm kind of keeping my table clean. You want to grab that hose, Caroline? Yep. You want me to just throw it on there? Oh. Yep. So, um, when I'm doing a big uh, job, I'll have two tables. One is like the the getting rid of feathers and all the dirty bits and the other table is for when someone's actually eviscerating. So can I have that again, Caroline? Yep. So here, I this is one method of holding birds. Trying to hold a bird and it not slip out of your hand is very hard. I've learned that you can grab it by the, the wings like this and then you can flip it around, spin it around, figure out how you wanna get it as clean as possible this way without it falling. <laughs> so, you want to take that? So, 
from here, other methods that I do are, I don't keep the Pope's nose. I'm not a Pope's nose kind of person. So I cut it right off. Uh, for those that, that don't know, Pope's nose is the tail. So on the tail itself, this is the chicken tail. So there's a gland right here. Mm -hmm. You can keep the Pope's nose on. People love it, think it's delicious. Um, I don't have time for it and I'm in production mode. So I take it right off. It makes the next step a lot easier, but you can just dip that gland right off um, and leave the nose on if you want. Um, so I've taken the nose off and you can see here, I've exposed already where I'm gonna be going next. But before I get there, I also, I flip it over and put it on its breast. This is a retail look to things. If you open up the neck, this side, when you're splitting open this here, you're exposing the breast for ripping. And it doesn't, it's not as good as a presentation and it's gonna ruin your breast meat skin stuff. So what I do is I always turn my chicken over to be on the backside and that's where I'm cutting so that I'm not ruin, ruining that skin on the breast. So I hold the neck, squeeze the skin real tight like this, and then you can just take your knife and it just opens right up. I barely even, I'm not even cutting, I'm just kind of grazing. And by pulling the skin, it pulls it right out. And while I still have it all in my hand, I'm taking everything and then grabbing the neck and pulling it apart and kind of opening it up like this. From there, you go back in and you can find the throat and the, um, uh, what are those two things? The, the right, there we go. Thanks. <laughs> so you have your two pieces here that you're grabbing and then you're pulling them from the skin and all the way to finding the, the food sack and you're then loosening up that sack and getting that all loose. So that is the second step. So now I've opened this up and I've loosened this so that'll be um, easier to pull later on. And I've also left a lot of skin so that when I take that neck off and the neck is gonna be really stabby, actually it's got that bony bits, this skin will help protect it so if you're putting it into a package, it's not breaking the plastic on the package. So I'm gonna turn it back over, back onto its back, exposing the breast. And then, so the vent is here and I've gone right below by cutting the Pope's nose off and you can kind of lift up almost here and right, this is that tailbone. So I take the knife in right at the tailbone and, and then I lift that up, that hole now. So the, you'll see the intestines is right above this, okay? And then I go on either side. Well, I start on one side and I kind of do like a lap around that whole vent. So I start on one side exposing it and I keep coming around here. And then back around to the other side. I'm trying to show you, but it's on the wrong side. So, so now I've, I've not let go of the vent. I'm keeping the vent holding on to it as I'm playing, uh, as I'm working with the knife around the vent. So now that I'm holding on to it, I'm loosening up everything that's around it um, and then bring it down off the table. So, ah. so now all the dirty bits are this way. Okay. So I'm keeping as much poop away from the carcass as possible. And then from there, I'm going back in and I'm scooping and sweeping to try to get all the rest of the bits out. So that's the intestines. And then from there, you're looking for the heart, the livers, the lungs, and the stomach, which is the gizzard, for those that like eating gizzards. And so, And so what, I, what we loosened up here is now being pulled out this other side. 
So there is most of the dance. You have the liver, you have the heart, you have the kidney, you have the gizzard, you have the intestines away. Yeah. So from here, I detach the uh, gallbladder from the liver. My method is by taking the gallbladder and squeezing it and just pulling apart. Of course, it's going to explode on me, aren't you? So there's the, the liver and the heart. The gallbladder is here. For those that want to keep the um, stomach, these are two pieces. One piece you can pull apart, the other piece you can't. So I just use a knife to take them both out. And so all of this goes into there. And so pose. Yes, Lisa, you can keep it. <laughs> so again, um, as I was processing, I nicked one of the intestines. And so I am trying to keep this space as clean as possible all the time. That way that this carcass stays as mostly clean as possible at all times. So now that I've pulled out that, the things I've missed are the, oh, it's a boy, um, the, the balls and the lungs. So the lungs, you have to scoop with your fingers. Um, if these are the lungs, the, the rib cage, you're taking your fingers and sweeping your fingers between the rib cages. It will feel very flat. You need to dig your fingernails in and try to loosen up those ribs. So that's what's happening here. I'm taking my fingers and getting the lungs loosened from the ribs on either side and you have them right here. So they're a very hot pink color. Um, and then depending on the bird, you also want to take out the, the ghibli bits. So these, these balls are kind of small. They're not pine nuts. Um, so there we have an empty carcass that you can rinse off and throw into your cold tub. I also like to prep the neck by cutting in as deep as I can right here. Not too far, I don't want to cut all the way. And then I spin the neck because neck is great to help with broth and soups and I just kind of stick it back into the carcass. And then that way when you're processing birds, trying to keep all the pieces together with that bird, the neck, the heart, the liver, it gets jumbly. So this way, this is one thing you don't have to keep track of with each bird. So again, I then take the bird, do another nice rinse, including the inside. And it goes into my cold water. So, um, and that is the dance. I'll do it again, and then I'll welcome everyone to try their hand at it. And so I'll go through some of the things with you that I do here at my shop with the chickens and you'll see different things. You, you might do different things with your chickens. Um, so the first thing I do, see all of them, they take out that gland, uh, the Pope's nose. So all these chickens have still their tails. Um, you can also see the hole is a lot bigger. Those bones are gone. They, they cut them right back where these bones, actually those aren't cut back, they're just soft. Um, so these birds are soft, they're young, they're soft birds. Anyways, um, first thing I do when processing, I'll do it quick and then I'll take it a little bit slower. Lisa tells me I go too fast all the time. Uh, this is that skin that I talked about in the front that I leave as a nice flap to not ruin the breast, you can see they do the same process, so they're not ruining that breast meat uh, or breast skin. So I take that off. This I put towards dog food. It's just something I do here at the shop. We have a lot of dog owners that love the dog food that we make. So this here is the wings, and I, what I do is I flip them over. So I'm taking the bird, and it's sitting like this, and I'm going like this. That's kind of the motion I'm holding the wing at. So I'm holding it out and in between there there's a little the kind of the armpit and I'm just 
grazing the armpit. I'm not trying to cut into it. I'm just grazing it. And it opens up. And you can see there is the, um, the joint. So from that joint, you can keep going. And you kind of cut away from the, the breast meat that is under there. So you're cutting away and taking that off. And while it's still in my hand, before I do anything else, I just flip it around. There is on this wing tip, there is a knob right here. I put my knife literally on top of that knob, OK? I'm not putting it on the side. I'm not trying to. And I'm just resting my knife and then pressure, OK? And it should come right open. Um, and that is, so when you go out for wing night, this is not the wing you get. The wing you get is then cut again. So just know you're only getting half of it. Uh, the tip itself goes right into our dog food. Second, I do the other side. So open up the, the arm again. I cut or graze right at the armpit to open up and find the joint. Once I see the joint, that little ball, I kind of keep cutting away. You're going to get some of that breast meat. That's OK. It's a pretty decent sized breast. So again, I flip it over. I find that ball joint. And this one is not as happy as others. All right, so dog food wings. I then flip it back. I kind of hold one leg up. And I try to keep as much skin on as possible. I'm a skin person. I love skin. It's so tasty. Not everyone does. But to do so, I leave as much skin on my breast as possible. So here at my leg, I kind of cut towards closer to the leg. So I just like release the skin from there. It's, it's already open. So I'm just cutting the skin and grazing the skin to open it up. And then I switch over and I do the other side up here, opening it up. And sometimes the birds have been sitting, so they're kind of like this in this motion. So what I like to do is bend the legs back to make a nice sturdy surface for myself. So most of the time, when you first open that up, this, it's still going to be kind of wobbly. But by kind of bending the legs out, you're giving yourself a more solid surface. From there, I like to take my knife. You can find that center uh, breastbone here. I don't pick a side. I let my knife pick a side. Because by picking a side, you're just uh, not going to end up where you want to be anyways. So I just let the knife kind of ride down the side. And then whatever side it starts going down, I continue. And this is where the wishbone is. So once I hit the wishbone, it'll be a nice solid. I kind of curve my knife and come to the side of the wishbone. And then just open it up here. like this. So I'm taking the breast off of both the wishbone and the, the rest of the, the back of the chicken. And then I'll continue to release it off of the back of the chicken here, so off the carcass. So now as I come around this, there is still meat on this back side that usually gets forgotten about. So what I like to do as I keep coming around, I don't fully just cut down. I kind of keep going around because that's the easiest way to get that meat off is by going around the carcass. And so this is what I end up with. So when I take one breast off, this is what I end up with, is this extra piece here and your whole breast. But within this whole breast, you have, I call this stir fry meat. So that goes into stir fry. This, it had a little piece of bone that I saw on it as I cut it, because the bones are soft. I throw in the dog food. Dogs love bones. Um, also on the breast, you have your tender here. The tender is literally just ripped right off. You don't need a knife for this. You just pull it right off. And you can set that aside. So then this is your skin on breast. So there we have one. 
And so then now I'm going to do the other one. So now I can hold the carcass in place and a little steady and ride my knife along the side of that bone and down the wishbone. And then come around the other side. Now you all can be very gentle and slow and patient at this. Um, but just know how are you going to make a really good stock if there isn't some meat left on the bone. So, um, th that's kind of my take on like, you can be perfect or you can just get most of it. So again, here's my whole breast. I'm going to take off my stir fry meat. I'm going to take off my tender. So a little bit of that tender kind of broke away. I sell retail, so I like to keep things pretty and clean. So I put this meat here that's kind of flapping into stir fry, and there's my tender. So I also, with retail, I also like to have a clean carcass. You probably do too. I take off those odd bits and give those to the dogs. So here I have two nice breasts. I have some tenders. I've got some wings so far. Next, while, the, the, while it's still standing here in front of me, I have this meat that's kind of left over. What I do with this meat is I ride my knife down either side of the wishbone, and I have more stir-fry meat. And then I go on the inside and take this out. And this is kind of rippable once you get to this side. And this is more stir-fry meat. So I build up quite a bit of stir-fry meat over a couple birds. And then a lot of the bones I put right towards dog food. Now, the next thing I do is I take it and I lay the chicken kind of like this, in a very splayed out kind of way. Um, again, I'm taking it like this. And what I do here, while it's sitting on its side, I start on the back end. I take my knife along there, then there's going to be a hump where there's the um, bone um, connection, go around it, and then come back down. So it, right, see that pattern? It kind of goes like this, and then dips, and then back out. So while it's in this, while I still have it in my hand, I look at the, the thigh and the leg, and I go on the leg side of things. I'm a leg lady, so I look at the leg, find the fat, and right at that fat line, I cut. And you end up with a nice sliced leg and thigh. So again... If it was an, uh, maybe an older chicken, would you have been able to cut through that bone quite as easily? Or? Yep. Yes. Okay, that's yep. just how that, that bone is. That's just how it is at that connection. So again, um, I'm leaving the kind of the fat on the thigh. And, a, and having a nice leg, you can say. And so leaving the fat on, see that fat line? I put my knife right on the other side of it and then just cut down. And it'll be nice and quick and smooth. So, right, so here you have soup stock, dog food, chicken wings, chicken thighs, stew meat, le uh, legs, tenders, and breasts. So I'm going to do that again a little bit slower. And if anybody wants to get closer <laughs> to see what I'm up to, um, you're welcome. So again, I'm taking off the skin here and putting it towards the dogs. I'm taking the arms, and I'm kind of like flipping them out. So I'm rotating them out and finding that armpit, just putting my knife there, and they'll open right up. If there's no pressure of, by your hand, it's not going to open up like that, okay? So you need to give pressure, graze your knife, and it'll open up at that armpit. And then from there, you can cut out. While it's still in my hand, I flip it over and cut down on that knob. And I will come along and show everyone personally how this all goes down. But, this is again opening up the thighs 
making a nice sturdy surface. Take my knife, I don't even pick, it picks for me. Come down one side. So I move the carcass around a lot so that I can just keep moving with my knife. I don't try to work around it, I move the carcass around. Um, though my old boss would say, do less of that and just more of figuring out a better technique. Um, because the less time you pick up and put down, the, the more efficient you are. So that's why I like while the wing's still in my hand, that's when I take the wing tip off. Taking down the breast, past the um, wishbone, going along the internal cavity, going around the side. Lisa, what 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 do you say this is called? Is this this the meat oyster. the oyster? So. the legs up. So see, I've, I've come too high a little bit and I'm hitting bone and it's not lit, so then I have to come back with my knife to let it hit that and then I come back down. So you'll, you might hit that and that's fine, just, keep, just come back and come a little bit higher and you'll be able to make that scoop. Again, the fat is on the thigh, not on the leg. And see, I've cut two, see? Got to keep that fat on the leg, or on the thigh, um, otherwise it won't cut. So that first cut, you see I stopped, because I left some of that fat. So you got to go all the way. So again, taking the thigh off. So leaving the fat on there, cut straight down. So that is the breakdown that I do here at the shop. Uh, can you hand me one more bird? Some other things that a lot of folks want to know about is um, bone and breast and spatchcock. So this is taking the excess skin off. Uh, so for spatchcock, there's what, you, you're, what you're doing is just taking that back spine out. You can do it with a knife by taking the knife down the back side of either side of the spine. Um, so take the Pope's nose off down either side or get some nice chicken scissors and do the same method. So you're going down one side. You're literally just crunching bones here. And then start going down the other side. Can you do that with just regular kitchen scissors? No. No, okay. I need to be a little bit stronger. Um, these are, I, I bought them from a restaurant store as like chicken processing scissors. So um, I know that there, Lisa has some scissors that are an Asian style chicken scissors that she um, cuts right through things. I don't commonly use a knife. I usually just take my, or commonly use scissors, I just take my knife. And I have the spine like this. So this is that same spinal area. And so what we're doing when we're cutting this is we're going right along either side of that spine. See that? So this is the spine. You're just cutting those bones right along there. You can also take your knife. 
and cut them. You see that? They are cuttable with a knife. So, and less awkward. Um, so what's the benefit of spatchcocking? So, once you get to here, mm -hmm. I like to also, when spatchcocking, I take my knife down the center of the kind of breastbone area to help that separate, and then give it a little pump, and it breaks the breast. And so by doing this, and then tucking in the wings, uh, I can never tuck in the wings. Anyway, so by doing this and having a nice flat bone in breast, you can throw this on the grill. This thing on the grill, right? And so you're evenly cooking it compared to a carcass that's like this trying to cook on the grill. And it, this is getting cooked, but this is not as well. To where when you have it all splayed out like this, you're getting a whole thing kind of evenly cooked. So. It reduces your cook time. Yeah. So this is spatchcock, and they say that um, can't. I mean, I would just cut the wing tips off. Someone was saying that they tuck the wings in, and I'm not sure how that happens. Maybe it's like this, and then that goes on the grill like this, and then voila. So um, that's another method. You want to grab one more for me? All right, so lastly, this is, last one I'm gonna do for you is a bone in breast. So, um, and you see like, as I do things, I like, I, I rotate the wings, I kinda keep moving. I don't just keep trying to go for that thing. I put my knife on that knob and I'm, working at the, the piece itself. Um, it's a soft connection, so it'll come off. Um, I use gravity a lot to do things for me. So for a bone and breast, I take the legs off first. And then I take this breast itself. And so and it's really soft right down the middle here. So if you take your knife and go right down this, you get to the um, wishbone here. You can just kind of spread it open. And then on either side, find the wishbone. They'll pop up like this and take that off. So you're leaving it, some meat on there but you're getting this other product that you want, which bone and breast on the grill is also nice. So again, I put a, a knife, a mark right down the middle, and then I give it a crack. And so then it kind of opens that all up, and that's a bone and breast.